Hi there. Welcome once again to our study in the book of James. Today we are going to have a short session. We are going to conclude our study in the book of James. We are in James chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 7 and go down to the end of verse 20. James is speaking here and encouraging us how to live, how to be patient, how to wait for the things of God, not to be grumbling against each other, how the prophets face suffering and they persevered and we need to persevere in the same way. He goes on and gives us some instructions on how we should pray for the sick and how we should offer up prayers for those who need it and that we should also help those who are struggling, who are not walking with the Lord the way they should that it's our responsibility to help them out. So I think this will be a great blessing to you as we bring a conclusion to the book of James. Once again, thank you for joining me in our study in James. Today we are going to conclude this study. We are in chapter 5, as I mentioned already, and in verse 7. James is continuing to encourage us here how we should walk with the Lord. So let's just jump right in. Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. He's just encouraging us how we have to have patience and just to know that the Lord is going to do whatever he wants to do. Oftentimes we get excited about something, especially if the Lord is calling us to do something and we want to jump right in there. But oftentimes we need to take a step back and just wait until the Lord opens things up for us. King David was a great example of that when he was anointed to be king. He didn't become king for 13 years. And so it took some time for him to become what God had called him to be. Verse 9, he goes on to say, Do not grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the Lord's name. So don't grumble against each other and continue to be patient, right? Talking against each other, judging each other, that's not the things that God wants us to do. He wants us to walk together in unity. He wants us to walk together in the love that he has for us. That's what he prayed in John 17 when he was praying for us, that we would be like the Father and the Son, that we would be one, and that people the world would know that we are Christians by the love we have for one another. Verse 11, he goes on to say, As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Again, he's encouraging us to have perseverance, to walk in perseverance, to walk in just waiting on the Lord, knowing that the Lord is going to do something at the right time. Verse 12, he goes on, he says, Above all, my brothers, do not swear, not by heaven, nor by earth, or anything else. Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. If any one of you is in trouble, he should pray. If anyone is happy, let him sing songs of praise. So he's just telling us not to swear by anything of this world because everything of this world is is fallible, right? And not even to swear by heaven, but just to say, yes, our, our yes is yes and our no is no. Or else he says here you will be condemned. James comes across pretty strong in the way that he talks. In fact, Martin Luther, when he was studying the scriptures and bring in the Reformation, he actually petitioned to have James, the book of James, taken out of the Bible because of some of the things that James says. Some of the things he's saying is pretty harsh, but I think James is saying these things in a harsh way to encourage us to walk in the things of the Lord because of the troubled times that they were in. So he continues, he said, if any one of you, if any one of you is in trouble, you should pray. That's what we do. We pray, right? We ask the Lord to help us. If anyone is happy, let him sing songs of praise. Express our happiness with the joy that we have in the Lord. Verse 14, he goes on and says, If any one of you is sick, he should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. 
and the Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. So if any of us are sick, we should pray, right? We should call the elders of the church to pray over him, anoint him with oil. If anybody is, has a major sickness and the prayer offered in faith will make the, the sick person well. And the Lord will rise him up. And if he sinned, his sins will be forgiven. And that's a blessing, right? For our sins to be given and to walk in the things that God has for us. Verse 16 he says, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you will be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. The prayer of a righteous man. Who is a righteous man? We are, right? We are righteous not because of what we do. We are righteous because of what God has done for us. If we confess our sins to one another and we pray, then we can see healing happen, right? And the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Verse 17, he gives an example here. He says, Elijah was just a man like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. So he's saying that if Elijah can pray these things and these things can happen, why not us? Even more so us, because we have the Holy Spirit, right? We are walking with the Holy Spirit. So if we have the Holy Spirit with us, we can uh, grab hold of these words that James is telling us and that we should just pray with earnestness, right? Amen. My brothers, if one of you should wander from the truth, someone should bring him back. Remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his ways will save him from death and cover a multitude of sins. He's just encouraging us to care for one another. This is what he's doing, right? Actually, in all of this that we've read here, we can see that James is fulfilling the command that Jesus gave us to love our neighbor as ourselves. In all these things, he is saying that we should care about one another. We shouldn't judge one another. We should be waiting in patience. We should pray. We should pray for the sick. We should call on the elders if somebody's sick. We should confess our sins to one another. You know, we should help anybody who wanders from the truth and bring them back into the fold. You know, oftentimes we get so concerned about ourselves and we're so focused on ourselves that we don't want to reach out and to help other people. But this is what God is calling us to do, to care for one another, to love each other, to be a brother's keeper, to watch over those who are of the flock, right? And those who are your brothers and sisters. Well, this is a short session today. We just wanted to finish up this book of James and we are looking forward to our next session when we will jump into the first book of Peter and we will see what we can learn from there. It's been a great pleasure bringing this study to you. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this book of James. We thank you for the things that James has been speaking to us. We thank you that he is uh, giving us instructions on how we can conduct our life. And Father, we just pray that we can take those things to heart. We just thank you for this time we have together, Lord. Father, what a blessing it is to share your word and to have it go out. Father, we know you know, send out your word and it does not return void. But Father, you will touch the hearts of each one that, that you would have it touch. We just thank you for this time that we've had together in the book of James. And Father, we just want to pour out a blessing on each one that has been listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, my name is Stuart Gould. It's been such a pleasure to bring you this study in the book of James. And I look forward to our next time together when we will study uh, the book of First Peter. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Remember, he loves you, and so do I. Okay, girls, take us home. <laughs>